Welcome to Musing with Tanya D podcast. Once again, I am your host, a practicing holistic shaman, medium, and otherworldly life coach and subtle energetic surgeon. My intention is to utilize the power of indigenous technologies, the ancient wisdom of our bones, our original divine blueprint to navigate through our soul's harmonic, the realm of the elementals, the elemental highway into and through the imaginal realm possibly reintroducing you to the magical being I believe resides within each and every one of us unique and as individual as our thumbprint through these subtle realms and bodies the energetic anatomy to raise our frequency to the prime directive to our inner genius our personal medicine I do call myself a holistic shaw medium which is a choreography of merging them all my name is Tanya D and welcome to my podcast Medicine Room. I do go live on YouTube at Tanya D for a daily snippet. Each day I share the element of the day coming from the four pillars of Chinese astrology or destiny. These four pillars are actually a gateway into the realm of your personal elemental highway and you may be wondering or pondering why that's so very important. Well, once you understand or have an idea of the elementals, you can then utilize them for healing a variety of symptoms and conditions and balancing our personal elements with our gift and our purpose, our prime directive, whether it's our thoughts, our beliefs, our feelings, our spirit, our mental academy, energy, vitality, transformation, and so much more. It's all part of the cosmic soup. The spirit that resides within each element is also a part of our elemental structure or foundation, along with the subtle energies, body and fields and cosmic insights messages and so much more might I add so going beyond being inspired and just loving the season of the witches nature's transformation the magic the variety of guests that I've actually had and literally enjoyed during the season this podcast season that's why I do title the show the musing with Tanya D because it's about musing so if there's anybody that you wish to hear from again that really got you excited about life and really your own magical essence that resides within each and every one of us, please comment and share and let me know. And of course, stay curious, questioning everything. That is also one of my mantras. This week's audio room artist is Paula Collins. She's a trusted spiritual mentor, transformational healing specialist for individuals who are ready to really put themselves first, get more deeply in touch with their divine feminine energy, to call it back to them, to unleash it so they can live to their highest potential. People actually hire her to give them the confidence needed to explore their true authentic selves along with that divine feminine energy without guilt or shame or those lower frequency vibrations. So their sense of self-esteem, worth, and love fills them with peace, validation, and empowerment. So with all of that, let's welcome Paula to the season of the witches. How are you doing today, Paula? I'm doing quite well. How are you? Fantastic. I've upgraded from doing great to fantastic this year. Hey, it's always a good thing. <laughs> so let's dive in. What is like my empowered me? What is that all about? And why do you believe that's important or think? <laughs> okay, so basically my empowered me is a program to help people work through all of the blocks and negativity that are holding them back it includes shadow work and limiting beliefs and negative thought patterns to let that go so they can once people let go of those things they are able to really get in touch with who they were designed to be who they were created to be. And once you can get to that point, it empowers you because you don't always have that niggling, little annoying voice saying, nope, nope, can't do that, shouldn't do that. No, nope, remember what time, last time that happened. So the process is to uncover all of that so that that can get silenced and you can dig in and really get to know yourself and get to know what you desire, what you dream, and what you deserve. And once you can get in touch with those things, then 
you feel more powerful, you feel more confident. Anytime you can build up confidence and self-esteem and worth and love, you become more powerful. And when you become more powerful, then the sky becomes the limit. And then everything from there just expands exponentially. And I feel like people have been, especially women have been silenced for far too long. So can you give us an example of what this may look like? You mean in a person? Yeah, like what do you find most people? This is like they don't love themselves, so they're shattered in their loveless relationship to who they are. Or is it like a feeling or is it their environment? So like what does this look like that you found? It could be a combination of all of those things. I think a lot of times it manifests itself in being like that yes girl or the yes man, you know, I will do everything in my power to make sure everybody else is happy. And I will keep doing that. I will put myself on the back burner until I can finally get to me, which means you normally don't have time for you. So you become this sort of people pleaser, maybe even a little bit of a chameleon because you put on the mask that you think everybody else needs to see so that you can be accepted. So you can be seen as lovable then the more you keep putting on all these different masks, you forget who you are authentically on the inside. And it's exhausting. Absolutely. So how do you actually feel that empowerment along with the divine feminine are go hand in hand, like they're, they resonate? Well, part of it is, I feel like, especially now, and the things that just I see in my interactions with other people, and watching the news and everything else, I feel like we have this major imbalance in the world energetically, where the world is very masculinely driven. It's that being on the control, the power trip, and silence that caring, compassionate part of yourself because nobody's going to respect you if you show too much of that. So, and I've seen it with, even with a lot of women who are strong business women, they have more of a masculine energy to them because they're competing with men. So they've adopted that. And a lot of men have been told, oh, don't show your feelings, right? So all of that part of the compassion and the kindness and the gentleness that that has been like if you want to say bred out of people so that this power part can take the precedence and while it's good to have that and to have that kind of control and thought process when you're doing things when you have more of that then we forget about the rest of it. So anything that is part of the feminine, which is the nurturing and the compassion and the kindness, that takes a back seat. And until those two things go from being unbalanced in the scale to becoming more balanced, we can't get more of the divine feminine to rise up. And once we get more of the divine feminine to rise up and we equal out the playing field and the scales, then people become more empowered because they find I can be kind, I can be compassionate, I can extend that to you, and it doesn't make me weak. And they can feel good about that, they can feel strong about that, and they can learn that those things are actually beautiful strengths that they've been hiding for too long. And I think that that makes a huge difference. Well, and I think we've also been programmed or brainwashed that kindness is often seen as a weakness. Yes, absolutely. A lot of the time. So how long have you been a life coach? I have been a life coach for about a year and a half now, but I have been a Reiki master for 20 plus years. So I've been using energy medicine to help people for quite a long time. And I felt like in my personal life, in my interactions with other people, I was doing a lot of what I'm already doing, you know, now that I've given myself a title. And so I just was trying to figure out what do I call myself? And so that's how the title came out. (laughs) The title for the life coach or the empowered me part? The life coaching. The title for my empowered me has been something that 
has been showing up in so much of what I listen to and so much of what I'm already doing. And even though my English background is saying to me, oh, that doesn't sound completely right. I just felt very strongly about that name, the My Empowered Me. But the life coach was something I decided to give to myself after I did some training. So you mostly specialize in Reiki? No, actually, I have several healing modalities because I find that, you know, not everybody fits into one little box. So I use EFT meridian tapping. I use sound bowls and sound therapy to help people. I use the Reiki. I combine essential oils and things of that nature into it. I do a lot with meditation and guided imagery. So, and I also have a couple of different things I use for like cord cutting and forgiveness techniques and all of that comes in one nice little package to help people their journey. So you specifically don't specialize in one of those? You blend them all? I look at whoever I'm working with and I try to figure out what is going to work best for that customer, for that client, for that person. Because I have found that, like I said, not everybody responds to the same thing. And I want to make sure that I am helping my client along their journey the best that I can in the way that is most helpful for them. So what kind of life coaching do you offer? I do one-to-one life coaching, which I can either, if somebody's local, I can do that in person or I can do it via Zoom. I mostly work with women, but I have worked with a couple of men in the past. I just find them to be a little more difficult of an animal to get them past being so left-brained, as I tell my husband. So I mostly work with women who are trying to figure out who they really are and who want to get rid of the limiting beliefs. And they want to figure out who they are and they want to love themselves. And they want to take care of themselves because they're tired of giving to everybody else and not to themselves. Do you find that women actually start to wake up at certain times in their cycle through life or at all ages? Is there a specific time like a Saturn return, say, or a midlife crisis when Chiron or Uranus opposes their natal Uranus or anything like that? I have found that Saturn returns have huge impacts on when people are waking up. I have seen that happen. I've also seen it happen a lot with women when they become empty nesters, right? The kids have gone off to college and now they're like, what do I do? I'm so used to having this one thing and now that major part of my life. So it's a huge life change for them. And so I find that that is another big thing. I mean, I had my big wake up after I was in a really serious car accident and my Saturn return isn't going to hit for a few years yet. So mine was a little early and I guess I had a major life change because I had to retire from my job. So it was a huge life shift. Yeah. And the Dagara that's called an initiation like a wake up call. That's how the universe sends those flashes to us. If we tend to not pay attention to yeah, the sudden, the subtle hiccups that we're having, the universe sends us the grand maester. Yes, absolutely. It says, okay, if you're not going to listen, I'm going to put something in there to stop you. Do you want to share that experience? Sure. So in November of 2019, I was a high school English teacher and I had been for several years and I was driving to see something big that was happening for one of my students. It was going to be a surprise for her. Her mom had told me about it and I went to turn left and I was T-boned. A person went left of center in a no passing zone and and hit me at 30 miles per hour. You never know how good those safety features on your automobile are until it happens. And so I thought I had a concussion and because I was a teacher, I knew what concussions were all about because I watched students with them. So I went back to work and it never got any better and it was getting worse. 
And then we had the big shutdown in the US. And it was during that time, my husband was like, and he and I talked and I'm like, I don't think I can go back. He goes, yeah, I don't think you can go back either because I was really struggling a lot. And I had gone back to the doctor and she goes, yeah, I think this is more than a concussion. And we did a bunch of testing and found out that it was a permanent brain injury that manifested itself in very strange ways in my life. So now I'm home and I'm feeling way too young to just prop my feet up and do nothing. And I was like, what do I do with my life? So I tried healing by myself. And that's not always as easy as it sounds to, you know, figure out, you know, what's all this stuff that makes me feel the way I feel about myself, you know, not being enough and all of that. And I hired a life coach and she helped me immensely. And she's the one who said, you know, you'd be really good at this. She goes, you have that kind of nurturing energy about you. She said, you should look into it. And so I started researching it and I was like, yeah, you know what? I think I can do this. So did you find which one of the modalities that you work with seemed to really assist you through your process of doing this? Was it more like the ceremony? Was it the sound baths? Was it like doing Reiki on yourself? Well, I had a really great Reiki practitioner that I go to so I could fully commit to a session. And she helped me a lot, but also the EFT Meridian tapping was really helpful for me as well. Um, Sound bowl was not something that I picked up during my own transformation. That was something that I stumbled upon. And because I have a musical background, it just really sort of resonated with me. I love the sounds of the bowls and I love trying to play songs on them. And I started reading research and I, or listening to research, I should say, and found that it was really proven to work. And I was like, wow, what if I could provide sound healing through different ceremonial type things? And so I provide those now and I love it. So was there certain tapping, like a certain meridian that you felt was more expressive for you to assist you? Like, was it the metal meridian or was it wood fire earth metal even star or anything like that was there one certain tapping that worked more for you i think it became almost a combination depending on what layer of the onion i was peeling back at the time as to what kind of energy i needed to bring into my healing at that point you know sometimes i needed something a little stronger So obviously that was more fire ignited, but sometimes I need something more nurturing, which was more grounding and earth based on it. It sounds like it just went dependent on the day and the experiences you were experiencing. Yeah, it went on that. And it, like I said, it also depended on what part of the deeper I got into peeling back the layers, the more intense. I needed the energy to be because I was getting into deeper things that were, was trauma that I had experienced as an adolescent. So it was deeper inner child wounds. And then I also had experienced IET. I'm not sure if you are familiar with that, but that's integrative energy therapy. um, And it uses the violet angelic light and it's great for generational and past life trauma and found out through my reiki practitioner that i had some stuff i needed to unload there that i didn't even know i was carrying didn't you know because we don't know those sort of things and so yeah that was really helpful too i i unloaded a lot of stuff during iet a lot of stuff so it sounds like it was mostly ancestral there was a ton of ancestral yeah yeah you know and and on top of that you know i had a friend who did a past life regression on me and looked at my into my akashic records and we started to really figure out where some of the baggage was that i was carrying and that got really deep from experience right you learned went through all this and learned yes i did i did i learned a lot of it and so the modalities that resonated the best with me were the things that I learned, you know, that I invested the time to learn and to get certified in so that 
I could use them. And then there were things I was like, you know what, I'm going to leave that, those things to the people who are really in touch with that. That's out of my wheelhouse. I'm going to stick with my own wheelhouse. So do you mostly do one-on-one sessions or group offerings? There's the group mostly for the sound bathing and then one-on-one is for more of your transformation. I have a lot of one-on-one, but in the past I've done a chakra series for seven weeks to help people get so that was a group and then in person but i'm also going to start offering virtual sound baths as well because i found that those have been pretty transformational as well especially when working with chakras because the bowl each bowl is tuned to one of the notes on the scale which resonates with one of your chakras so do you have all the bowls i do fantastic yeah, I have a couple sitting next to me because I was working with a client who needed a little heart and solar plexus work done uh, via Zoom. So I have those ones out, but I have I have all of them. And there are a few more that I'm kind of coveting because they just sound really interesting. <laughs> they awaken a spirit that resides within you that hasn't come out of that onion shell yet. Yep, exactly. Fantastic. So how can people find you? They can find me on Facebook. I have a private group called Discovering Self Love. And so they can find me there. I am on Instagram at serene.wellness.with.paula. <laughs> I am on TikTok at Serene Paula. And then I also have a website, serenewellnesswithpaula.com. And the website goes very in depth into all of my different offerings in different ways that people can work with me. So do you prefer people work with you through Zoom or one-on-one or it doesn't really matter? It doesn't matter. It really doesn't. What I do, what's most comfortable for my clients. I have a couple of people that I work with one-on-one who don't live very far from me, but they are more comfortable in their own home. And so we do that via Zoom. I mean, I'm not going to tell somebody if you're nearby, you got to come to my house. That's not fair. You know, I mean, people need to be comfortable when they're doing healing work. You need to feel safe. So do you ever do like gatherings of like sound, like once a month you do like a sound bath with certain, where you just tell people to join in on the fun? I do. And those right now have been live where I do, I just, um, last week, and it was like the 21st was last week was the summer solstice. And so I had a live summer solstice circle, which was absolutely beautiful. And for my live circles, I tend to keep them smaller because I offer a lot in that hour and a half energetically. It's not just sound, it's combined with cacao ceremonies and Reiki as well. So, and then online, I will also do sound baths as well. In fact, I think this month, my full moon and my new moon will both be online via Zoom. Fantastic. So is there anything else that your heart feels overjoyed to share with my listeners? I just feel so honored and so humbled that, you know, the universe chose me to go out and to do this work and to help bring about necessary healing and enlightenment for people at a time when it's so crucial to help break down the barriers and the divides in society. And the only way that that can be done is with love and you can't get to love until you get rid of all the other stuff. And, you know, the different places that I have been and the different groups that I'm in, I get to meet in other incredible energy and light workers like you, Tanya. And that's a blessing too. I love to be able to connect with people and learn about people. I just find people fascinating, so. (laughs) Yeah, I believe everybody has a gift and a purpose. And once we stop, start living our gift and purpose, it, we get more in the flow. And your life becomes fuller and you finally figure out what the word joy means. Yeah, peace, joy. Absolutely. The joy molecule. After our episode interview, I actually reached out to Paula and asked her to create some sound bathing for my audio medicine room listeners. So stay tuned and take a mini sound bathing 
into your frequency energy body. with that how do you feel my energetic beings getting a little sound bath to reconcile and clear your energetic field sound bathing sound healing i will have all of paula's contact links in the show notes 
for you as well as if this episode inspired you in some magical, majestic way. And I'm absolutely positively, I'm sure that it did. I'm sure you're feeling it in your bones. Sound healing is just one of the modalities that we have to activate core particles and waves of our authenticity our gift in our purpose and obviously Paula has found hers the universe has put her on her path and if this episode inspired you in some magical way please tag at the Tanya D with that selfie and your big juicy smile and if your heart is nudging at you to support the Musing with Tanya D podcast, the link to pay it forward is also in the show notes along with some other goodies. And as always, I will see you on the other side. Ashe. Blessings. Blessings.